NASDAQ 100 closing in on yet another record closing high today. The mega caps already sitting on double digit gains and substantially so for the year. But can this narrow leadership continue to grind higher? Let's ask Doug Clinton of Deepwater Asset Management. Welcome, Doug. It's good to see you on this Friday. Likewise, Scott. Happy Friday. You too. Um, you know, I've run out of superlatives to describe what's what's happening. Some who are, are even positive and invested use the word insane for some of these mega cap gains. W what words would you use and and how do you feel about what you witnessed? Well, when a trillion dollar market cap is up 50 percent in a month, I think that probably barely qualifies as insane. You know, we are big time tech investors. We have uh, a lot of love for the MAG-7, but I think as rational people, too, we look at some of the moves we've seen over the past month, really the past eight weeks, and at some point, you know, these trillion-dollar companies can't keep adding a couple hundred billion dollars to their market cap every single month. So my view is, at some point, we will get a break. We're sort of due for a breather. Maybe we're due for a little bit of a pullback. I don't know if that happens in a week or longer. Obviously, the market can be insane, to the, the word of the moment here, for longer than we think. Uh, but longer term, that's how we like to try to look at these stocks and not try, try to play the short-term trends. All of the MAG-7 continue to have really great optionality as it pertains to AI as an emerging technology. We think over the next several years, a lot of these companies will have benefits that will see flow through to earnings and I think can continue to support these stocks outperforming uh, some of their peers in the broader S&P. I don't know if this is just too much of the, a softball loaded question is to ask you which one of the group looks more insane than, than the others. And I only qualify my question saying, well, NVIDIA is like literally going to the moon every day. So maybe that's the easy choice. But is it necessarily? I don't think it's necessarily NVIDIA. I mean, the, the tough thing and, again, the insane thing with NVIDIA is even though the stock is up 200 plus percent in a year, the multiple really hasn't expanded that much. So a lot of it has actually been supported by a very rapid increase in demand for their GPUs. All of the hyperscalers obviously are building out infrastructure to support their investment in AI. So I probably wouldn't say NVIDIA. Uh, I might give you a, a little bit of a divergent answer. I'll tell you the one that I'm actually the most frustrated with, mm -hmm. um, which maybe means it also, to some uh, extent, could be insane. But it's Google. I mean, we own it. We are shareholders in Google in our core Titan fund. And the thing that's super frustrating about them is the stock's up 50%. Why should we be upset with that? It's because they should be the leaders in AI, and they just haven't been. You know, open AI, I think, is clearly two steps ahead of them for all the data that they have, 20 years of search data, for all the distribution they have, billions of users touch their products every single day. We think they should be in the lead in AI, and they just haven't shown the hunger. They haven't shown the fire to really be aggressive going after AI. And we think that that could be a mistake. We'd like to see them get a little bit more aggressive with the products they're putting out. Does that do you own it or not? We do own Google. We do. It's one uh, again, as I say, uh, it's insane maybe to be frustrated when the stock's up so much. Mm -hmm. But as shareholders, we think there is more there. So I actually think it's insane that they haven't been more aggressive because I think that they're leaving a huge opportunity on the table. Meta um, is really the standout of, of this particular period just because they're earnings report was so amazing. And then the stock's reaction was just, I was like shocking to look at how, how much it was up coming off the best year ever last year. Of course, you, you own this stock. Do you like it the best in the group? Meta is our favorite in the group. I think that the year of efficiency that Zuckerberg undertook a little over a year now has really set a new tone at the company. And when we talk about AI, the pace of innovation here, it feels like every month it's like three years of development in the old world. I think that that year of efficiency has really set the tone at Meta in a way that Google has not figured out how to set the tone. One of the things that I think is actually very underappreciated with for Meta, you know, we've seen it to your point in the numbers in the last earnings, the thing that they still have that could be a huge business in the future is their open source model business. Right now, they have the leading open source AI model in the world. That's Llama 2. I think it's downloaded something like 30 million times in the last couple of months. I believe that over time, 
Mark Zuckerberg is going to use the playbook he has always used with every product he's developed. You figure out how to get a billion users to use a product, and then you really figure out how to monetize it. So he talked about some of the, the tangential benefits they're seeing from Llama now in terms of interest from developers working with Meta, improving their internal models. But I think over the longer term, we're going to see them provide some different services around Llama that mm -hmm. could be a multi-billion dollar business for them maybe over the next two to five years.